it's never too late to start anything. People just say that like it's too late because they don't want to start now to put in the work. It's not even about the number of followers or views. Would you rather have a million views of you doing a prank video or 10,000 views of you talking about your actual business that's attracting the people that want to buy from you? I think that so many service-based businesses focus on selling the front end product without actually delivering on the promise. So for us, we've helped 300 students hit $10,000 a month. How do you build an eight and a half million dollar education business? If I had to simplify it, I would say, What's going on, Wealth Builders? Today, I'm live at WealthCon and I got one of our speakers. This dude, let me tell you, I met him a couple of months ago in Utah. Absolute stud. He was hosting the Limitless event, brought so much energy. The dude is super jacked. I've seen him on social media. <laughs> and as I got to know him, you know, I got to learn more about his business and, and him as a man. You know, last year he did eight and a half million bucks in education and um, fitness and social media and everything else. And um, dude, he's just got great content. I want to learn how he did it and uh, build all this. So we got Brian Mark. What's up? What's up, dude? Before we get into this podcast, I just want to say, Watching how you move this weekend is very inspiring, dude. Mm. I just watched this guy get off stage, speak, deliver so much value, go into the back room, deliver so much value, and then right from that, come into this podcast. So to see how you move, bro, is very inspiring. I Thank you. That Appreciate that, bro. Yeah. Well, then we have, um, I got another podcast right after, yeah. and then I got to hop on stage with my wife right after. Then I got to interview Tim Tebow, mm. and then I got a party with the new students. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So I just like try to keep the energy up all day and yeah. you know, yeah. but when you love it, it's, it doesn't seem like it's work. Yeah. It's like, but I feel like some people, a lot of people don't really understand how much goes into building a business like this, Yeah, but to see somebody moving like you move, it's like, it's not just the stuff you see on social media. It's like behind the scenes. It's like, you're the real deal. I appreciate that, bro. Yeah. And I appreciate all the support um, you've had with the event and helping promote and everything. It means a lot because um, one thing I've realized now throwing events like this every quarter that are this big, um, so many of the speakers don't really help. Like mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I hate to say this, but they kind of feel like they're doing you a favor. Yeah. And it's like, well, I mean, we're kind of like trying to do so much for our speakers. Like we're just asking for a little bit of help with mm -hmm. promotion. And um, dude, you went all out, man. So. I appreciate that. That mm. means a lot. I think that like, that's, I talked about this right on my YouTube channel. I think proximity is power. And so for me, it's like, yeah, I made 8.5 million last year. I'm super grateful for that, but I'm just getting started. You know, I'm 32 years old. And when I look at a guy like you, who's got more followers, got a bigger business than me, give me a speaking opportunity. I'm not going to take that for granted. And I think even when I get to like a, a higher level, like I never want to take opportunities for granted. So any room that I walk into, I want to show out. I want to like give my very best, go above and beyond. So when you gave me the opportunity, I like promoted for an entire month, built my whole, uh, my own landing page. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of penthouse for my clients. Yep. Yeah. We showed up, bro. So no, bro. That. It was amazing. So dude, tell me how you got started in this game, man. How, how do you do eight and a half million bucks? Like what, what how'd it go? Dude, I think, uh, my story starts at rock bottom. Okay. You know, so, um, in 2013 I was partying, I was drinking, I had, um, I was trying to build a business on the side. Like I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I was bartending and I was around people that were drinking, partying and doing drugs. And I never really partook. And I thought that I had the discipline to kind of keep myself away from it. Um, but in, you know, 2013, I ended up, you know, with a drug addiction. Yep. And uh, I didn't really know that I was an addict. And I think when you're an addict, you don't really realize you're an addict. Um, but slowly but surely, I lost everything. Got my car repossessed. Um, I got kicked out of my house. Um, I was living on my grandma's house in her trailer park. And um, I remember my rock bottom moment was actually when I got fired from my last nightclub manager job. This was my fourth job in three months. And um, I remember calling my ex at the time, who was actually also an addict. And I told her I got fired. And she's like, you got fired again? She's like, you got to you got to change your life. And so I remember I drove back to my grandma's house and it was four o'clock in the morning. My grandma's always been this like very caring, kind, considerate person. Four o'clock in the morning, I walk in and she's just waiting for me. And I look at her and this was after, you know, six months of me doing drugs, drinking, partying. And I just look at her and in, in that moment, I realized I was an addict. So I like burst into tears and I collapsed and I like laid on her couch and I just started crying. Mm -hmm. And she never asked me what was wrong. She just got up. She went into her room. She grabbed the Bible. She came out. She held my hand. She opened the Bible. She read it and she cried with me. And like something changed in me in that moment, you know, and I don't know, like, I always try to like put, put my finger on it. I don't know what it was, but I think it was this like idea that like, I literally hated myself at that point. And I was like, but if she can love me this much and she still believes in me, then I need to change my life. 
Mm. And so I started getting clean, started getting sober. Um, I got a job at a summer camp as a cleaner just to like get, just get my mind back again. Um, started working on my fitness goals. Uh, my fitness goals turned into a passion for like wanting to chase that. So I started doing fitness competitions. People started asking me how I was getting jacked. So I started training other people. <laughs> um, and then I got really good at that. So I started building a team to train other people. We built our fit fitness business to 54K a month. Mm. Um, in 2018, I realized I'm like, man, I've helped so many trainers get to five to 10K a month. Why don't I just make a business out of this? So since 2018, I've just been mentoring personal trainers and we've worked with over 5,000 online coaches now. Um, 300, 300 of our students hit over $10,000 a month. We've got like 50 students here yeah. to, to show up for WealthCon. So yeah, that's how it all began, brother. Bro, that's amazing. Yeah. So what like made you, <laughs> for lack of a better word, want to get jacked? Like what, was that just part of getting clean? It was like just changing your body and your life? Like what, what was the motivation? Um, I wanted to get girls. There we go. Hey, that's, that's, that's another one. Let me be honest. Like, yeah, I yeah, wanted yeah. to get girls. Like, yeah. let's be honest. Like, I wanted to get girls. But well, you got a good one. She's right there. Yeah, my, my wife's right there. Huh? Yeah. It worked. Yep. It yeah. works. You're good. <laughs> you got just jacked yeah. enough. Just jacked enough. Yeah. Yep. A little bit less than I wouldn't have gotten her. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I, that was it at first. And then, uh, dude, like working on your fitness, man, like, I think that's foundation for everything. Yeah. You yeah. just won a fitness competition, right? I did. Yeah. 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 Dude. Yeah. That's like, I, I watched you prep for it. Even when we didn't know, like I was, cause it's funny when we first met, your content had just started popping up on my feed a few months before. Yeah. And I was like, I like this guy, dude. Like he gets it. He's, he's, he's being real. He's being raw. Um, his quality's good. Like he's got all the right, he's doing all the right things. Like he's going to be big. Yeah. And I, I started seeing it maybe when you had, I don't know, 30,000, 40,000. Yeah. So like, I was like, he's like, I can just see mm. when they know what they're doing. It just, the results haven't caught up with the process. Mm. And I tell people that all the time in business. I'm like, I can identify who's going to be really big mm. based on the actions they're already taking right now. The mm. results may not be there yet, but you just know. Yeah. And, you know, I had enough people tell me that in my own life mm. where, you know, my results, you know, you're 32, I'm 34. Like our results aren't anywhere close to some of these guys who've been in the game for, you know, decades and yep. decades longer than us. Yep. But, you know, I've been fortunate enough to talk to someone like, bro, no, you're like on a way quicker path than mm. where we were when we were age. And I'm like, it's hard to hear. Mm. Like it's humbling. It's like rewarding, but it's also like, well, dude, you're like so far mm. like away. But like, I see it now because I'm like, dude, he's, he's got it. Yeah. That's really cool. You know, what's funny is when I first started following you, you had like 110,000 Instagram followers. And I just looked the other day. I'm like, you have 402 now. <laughs> so like, you're like, your process for expansion is just absolutely rapid. Yeah. And it's cool to watch your evolution too. Cause when I first started following you, it was just, just real estate. Yeah. You're just a real estate guy. Yep. And now it seems like you're branching out into other niches and you're starting to like really expand your, expand your message. So yep. I can see it in you too. Like that process of expansion. It's just, it's cool. And I do look up to guys like Andy Frisella, Ed Milet, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk. But then I think to myself, like Gary V when he was 30, like Where was he, he was just getting started. <laughs> he was just selling, starting to sell wine. That's it. Right. He was just getting started. So I think like guys like us, like I think personal brand bro is the number one thing um, that will separate you from everybody else. And I started going really, really hard on my personal brand because of my business partner. Um, he's been, you know, he does like, he'll do, he'll do a, a filming session where he'll, he'll film like 30 to 40 to 50 reels at once. He's crazy. <laughs> um, I've watched him grow his social media following to 1.7 million over the course of the last couple of years. And seeing that in front of me, I was like, you know. Why weren't you doing it though? I mean, you had a guy doing it, obviously, I'm sure it was bringing in revenue and you could see it. So why didn't you take it seriously earlier? I think I had a big ego. Mm. Yeah, I think I had a big ego. I think that I thought that my content was good. You know, I thought my content was really good. You're like, why am I not growing? My content's way better than that's so and so's. That's exactly it. And it's almost like this, like delusions of grandeur. Like, mm. you know, you're not willing to look at yourself for what it actually is. Right. Um, but uh, I started working with this guy named Devin. Yep. Me and you both know Devin. I've, and, I've invited him to Wealthcom before. He's the only guy that's ever looked at my content that he's like, He's like, this is absolutely trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So having somebody and he's 19 years old. So having yeah, somebody yeah. be able to look at my content and say that, like started to actually get me to look at my own content and be like, maybe I need to work on this. Um, so I'm just like super at this point with my content now, like I'm, I'm not, I have no attachment to it. You know, I know what my core message is and I know what I want to communicate. Yeah. And then I just find different ways to say that core message in a way that the algorithm receives. Yeah. I'm not deviating from who I am as a person, but I'm also paying attention to what's working on social media. And I'm trying to communicate my message in a way that like 
the algorithm is receiving, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's funny. Cause I caught him a, a year ago, over a year ago. And you know, once again, a guy, he didn't have a ton, but I was like, he knows what he's doing. He's going to blow up. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I connected with them and I just DM'd him and I was like, Hey, let's hop on a call, dude. Like I want to, I want to not pick your brain, but just like, you know, mastermind. Yep. And, um, sure enough, we just started chatting. I was like, so what do you, like, what's your play? What are you trying to do? You know? And I was like, why don't you just come to WealthCon, man? And just experience. Cause he's like, you know, a 19 year old kid who's like literally like in his bedroom doing just n never going in the outside world. Can we talk about how crazy that is though. Yeah. 19 years old in yeah. his bedroom, making content. He's like making a hundred thousand dollars a month now. Yeah. It's nuts. And I was like, dude, you need to go out in the real world and kind of just see the type of people that yeah. are going to end up becoming your clients. Yeah. And so I gave him a ticket and he came out and he was, you know, it was good. Um, but it is funny because, um, you know, you can learn from everybody. It's not just, um, one way or the highway, right? Because I like hearing philosophies from guys like him, guys like, you know, my other friend, Ryan McGinn, guys like Gary V and so-and-so no one guy is right. You know, they all have different things that worked for them and they will tell you what works for them. Yep. But you are unique in your own way. You got your own business. You got different priorities. I tell people all the time with content, it's not even about the number of followers or views. That's mm -hmm. the dumbest thing mm -hmm. that you could measure because would you rather have a million views of you doing a prank video or 10,000 views of you talking about your actual business that's mm -hmm. attracting the people that want to buy from you? Yep. Give me the 10,000 people all day. Yep. Yeah, and I think that uh, a lot of people, because they're chasing the views, they never actually learn <clears throat> how to use their voice and how, like what they want to communicate with the world. And everybody's always chasing like what's viral or what this guy's doing or what that guy's doing. Yep. And I think a lot of people, it comes down to like a fear of judgment. Like, oh, yeah. I'm afraid of being judged. I'm afraid of putting myself out there and having somebody say something negative about me. And uh, I think that's another thing that helped me back too, because I put out content on social media and then when I'd get a hater comment, I get like reactive and I'm like, ah. <laughs> You know, I'd want to respond. That sounds like a big buff bodybuilder guy, you know, probably, <laughs> probably got a little high testosterone level. Like, hey, dude, he's meet, not wrong. Meet okay. me in the DMs. Yeah. Meet me in the DMs. Exactly. Yep. yep. Um, you won't say that in real life. <laughs> <laughs> you won't come to WealthCon and say that to my face. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, but I think it's like the longer that you're chasing, you know, somebody else's or like somebody else's voice and that you're not spending figuring out what your core message is, what you want to share with the world. And I think, dude, I think when it comes to branding, consistency is always number one. Yeah. Consistency is number one. Consistency, then quality. Right. But so many people are like, oh, I want to figure out how to go viral. or I want to figure out the best strategy. Or, I want to figure out this. It's like get consistent first, post <laughs> seven days a week, 365 days. Out of those days, you're going to find some videos that performed well, figure out why they performed well, start doubling down on that and get better over time. Yeah. I always tell people quality or quantity leads to quality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Repetition gives you not only like you, you just get better because yeah. you're making more, but you get data. And now you say, oh, well, dang. Yeah. Nine out of 10 sucked, but one actually popped off. Yep. How many times can I like make a different version of that or, mm -hmm. you know, capitalize on that idea? And that's the only way you'll find that idea. Yep. You're, you're not going to find it by not putting out anything and then just thinking all day. Yeah. You, you need data. I'm always, and everything I do, like every, even every event is a new test for the next event. I'm like, Hey, let's try out this thing and see how it goes. Let's mm. try out this thing and see how it goes. Mm. And you know, a lot of the things that we're doing at this event are test runs from before that worked. And we're like, yeah, that's happening every event now. Mm. And then we're trying new things. Mm. And then there's things that don't work. And we're like, yep, don't do that again. <laughs> All right, we're not bringing that guy back. So, you know, <laughs> like it just is what it is. Everyone knows that my favorite way to build wealth is through real estate investing. That's the reason that I started Wealthy Investor, where we've trained thousands of students. But here's the thing. I've noticed that so many people fail to get started in real estate because they're worried about the money. They don't know where they're going to get the money to buy a house or flip or handle their renovations and things like that. And so they just never get started. I want to change that. And that's why I created a brand new free course that goes over five different ways that you could buy houses without using any of your own money today. And I'm going to give you it completely for free. All you have to do is go to wealthyinvestor.com slash podcast. I've made it specifically for you. The moment you go to that link, you'll be able to go get access to it and learn how you could start buying houses today without any of your own money. And if you're somebody who already has a real estate business and who wants to scale, we want to help you too. You can click the link below and book a free strategy call with our team if that's you. The other part about 
you said just be yourself and everything. It's so important because I know a lot of people that chase the algorithm and chase views. And so they're like, oh, I got to talk about the news and oh man, you know, like right now they're, they're talking about the Epstein files and I'm like, so, you know, it's just, it is what it is. Right. Yeah. And, um, there's so many people that because they want to get views and they want to be viral, like they're just chasing the next like rabbit. And for me, it just, it, it leads to burnout. And it also leads you to attracting the wrong people because now you're just attracting people that are interested in like that topic or that piece of news. They're not interested in you and what you actually do. Yeah. And again, like, I think that, um, so many people, I agree with you. It's because so many people are afraid if they talk about something that they actually like, <laughs> nobody and likes then, it. And then, and then somebody makes fun of them. They're like, Oh my God. Like, you know, then it hurts even more. Yeah. I remember one of my most viral videos, I actually had to turn the comments off. This was funny is I talked about how I did drugs on my honeymoon. <laughs> and, uh, I talked about it because, you know, come, I used to be an addict. And so for me doing drugs on my honeymoon, like I was super embarrassed. Right. Like, I can't believe I like stooped back to that level. Like I felt like I relapsed, whatever. And so I talked about that and that's my most viral video because people are like, oh, casual drugs is like, that's a bad thing. Like you should like love that you did drugs on your honeymoon. <laughs> and they're just like coming at me, dude. Yeah. So it's like, of course that video was like, oh, like I, I, I literally turned, it was like probably five or 6,000 comments. It was crazy. <laughs> Yeah. But the reason that that was hard is because it's actually something that's vulnerable to me. And so when somebody hates on something that's vulnerable to you, you're like exposing your underbelly. And that's why people would rather not do it. Yeah. So they'll chase the views or they'll post about something controversial because if somebody doesn't like this, it doesn't actually matter because they don't actually care about that. Yep. But to post about something you actually care about and have people attack it, that's harder. Way harder. So people won't do it. Yeah. Right? But that's where all the growth is. It really oh, is. a thousand percent. That's all the growth is. And look, nobody's hating on somebody they don't know. So at the end of the day, if you want to be known and you want to impact lives, you, you, hate comes with it. And I, I think that it's about resonance, you know, like if you want to create content that creates resonance, like emotional resonance, there's going to be some people that love you that are like, Ryan Pineda is the best, love his haircut. Yep. And there's going to be some people that are like, Ryan Pineda is the worst. Yeah. Hate his haircut, right? That's the his way His hair's it goes. fake. Yep. <laughs> his hair's fake. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a wig. Are fake, hair is fake. Yeah, everything's yeah. fake. Yeah. But that's how it goes. Fake you, grill. Yeah, you got like, when you create resonance, some people love you, some people hate you. You're like, you're triggering emotion. Yeah. Right? No, 100%, I agree. Yeah. So obviously brand is important and, and content is important, but how do you build an eight and a half million dollar education business? Mm. Um. If I had to, like, that's a complicated question. If I had to simplify it, I would say culture. Culture is the word. And the reason that I say culture is because I think that so many service-based businesses focus on selling the front end product without actually delivering on the promise. Right. So for us, um, one of the big, you know, things that we brag about is that we've helped 300 students hit $10,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And like 300 humans if you think about that number, making $10,000, that's a lot of people. Right. And we're really proud of that because, you know, that culture inside of our group, when somebody comes into our group, they feel like they're going to win. We, I think culture is also like, we change people's identity. Mm. You know, when somebody joins our program, they're working nine to five, they're struggling. Um, they want to provide a life of like freedom for their family. They want to travel more. And so they come into our program and they see all of our clients winning on a different level. It's like they want that. So they want to change their identity. So we help them like remove their limiting beliefs, remove their self-sabotage, cut out toxic friends and literally just like become new people. And because of that culture, they want to stick around. Right. They want to ascend to the different levels of programs. They want to come out to events when we host them. They want to hire team members. They just want to continue to learn from us. So our retention rate in our, in our program is about 93 to 94% right now. And that is why is that is so is it like a monthly subscription has work? Yep. So it's like you sign up for 12 months and then after 12 months, it continues on month to month. Got it. Um, so overall, again, like we have like 1500 students, uh, we lose about 80 a month out of the 1500. So that's 97 retention rate, which is really good. Um, and I think it's culture uh, because through culture, you know, when we throw an event, we sell out like the we threw an event that had Phil Heath come to speak at it. And we dropped tickets and they sold out in literally a minute and a half. Mm. It was wild. We were going to do it in my basement. And when this ticket sold out in a minute and a half, I was like, we need to get a bigger venue. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get a bigger venue. Yeah, so I don't think my basement's going to cut it. Well, we actually, funny story, we had actually bought a mansion to host events at. And then by the third event, we were selling out events too big for a mansion. But that's besides the So point. you bought a mansion. Yeah. Where at? Uh, in Kelowna. We bought a mansion because we knew we were going to host events. People just go to Canada for your events? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. To Kelowna, which is a very hard place to get to. 
Yeah, that's it's crazy. International airport. That's not Vegas where like I'm lazy and I'm like, yeah, but it's going to be in Vegas. People are like, all right. <laughs> like, that's Kelowna cool. is an adventure. People I know. Like, that's why I'm like, people come. <laughs> yeah, they got a camp in the airport. How much was this mansion? Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's culture. How it's much? A two million dollar mansion. You bought a two million. Like, did yeah. you live in it? Uh, we still live in it. Yeah, to this day, that's our house. Okay, so you live in it, yeah. and then there's a basement. Yeah, there's a basement that is big enough. <laughs> like, how big is the basement? <laughs> it's massive. It's very large. Uh, it's, uh, we have a 6,500 square foot house. Uh huh. This Not is, counting the basement. These are funny questions. I like. I'm a real estate guy. I'm, I'm no, no, genuinely no. curious. Okay, so uh, <laughs> 6,500 square foot house. Yeah. Um, the basement is where we used to throw events, but then the events got too big for the basement, so we had to get a bigger venue. But how big is the basement? Do you know? Um, how big is our basement? Like 2,500 square feet, I would say. How much? 2,500 square feet. Okay, 2,500. And is it just like empty? Like it's just open? It's or? like open space and there's a bar. So oh. there's open space and there's a bar. Is so. it just like concrete, like no, warehouse? No, no. Like, are you guys like decked oh, it out? It's a bougie mansion. We're in Kelowna. Well, it's a basement. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's, like it's, basement, it's either like finished or it's unfinished. Yeah. yeah, it's a finished, nice basement. So it's like a man cave. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That we host events. In. That's kind of tight. More. Yeah. But it's just, it doesn't, how many people could it fit? Like a hundred? Uh, we got the, the most amount of people we ever got there was like 70. And it was like, it was, getting it was pretty, tight. It was pretty squishy. The club was tight. <laughs> it was yeah. Pretty squishy. Dude, yeah. that's fun. I cannot squishy. believe people come to Kelowna to go to a the, lot the of basement. People. A lot of people. Like, uh, tell me about that marketing. Hey guys, we're going to have our, our meeting. It's in. <laughs> It's it, by the way, it's like super far to get to. Um, also, if you have a criminal record of any kind, you ain't getting in Canada. You know what's so funny about yeah, that? Like, One of my clients is here and he's so angry at me because every time we host an event, he's like, are you kidding me? He can't go. Yeah, I can't, I can't go. Yep. I, yeah. So I played two seasons of baseball in Canada. Yeah. So I lived in Vancouver and I lived in Winnipeg. And um, I remember, you know, every time people would come up to Canada. Yeah. You know, there are people who couldn't play yeah. and they got stuck at the border. It's like, what did he do? Oh, well, you know, he's got a DUI, you know, he's got this. And it's like, well, looks like they're one man down. We should dominate. <laughs> oh, but dude, they, Canada don't play. Yeah, no, we don't play at all. They don't play. Yeah. Do they still have, I think they called it the syntax of like, dude, it's like ridiculously high priced for tobacco and alcohol and everything. Yep. A hundred percent. Like very, very, very much so. Like what's a, what's a 12 pack of beer cost? Well, we don't drink beer, but uh, I know that uh, like t tobacco down in the States as an example is like, you know, it's like, I think it's like $5 for a pack of cigarettes or something like that. Yeah. And in Canada, it's like 35, $40. <laughs> yeah, it's dude. Wild. So like in baseball, our guy, I mean, everybody chews tobacco. Yeah. I didn't because, you know, freaking disgusting. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I probably have done it a few times in my life. And every time I would do it, it'd be like when I wasn't playing that day, they're like, yeah. all right, Ryan, dude, you're not playing. Like put a dip in. And I'm like, all right. So I put it. <laughs> so I put a dip in, dude. Literally within half an inning, I'm so like buzzed and out of my. I'm like, dude, what is going on? Like I'm seeing stars, and I'm like, dude, you guys play with this? You do this nine innings, like, and you do it in the clubhouse before the game, during the game, after the game, and you're out here hitting ninety mile an hour pitches. I can't even sit straight. How are you? How are you doing this? You're like on drugs, dude. It was crazy, and um, it was funny though because living in Canada, right? Like the the tobacco was so expensive. Like you know, they call them logs. Yeah. So like it's like a six pack of um, chew, and yeah, it's like dude in the states. I don't know. Back then, it was like three bucks yeah. a can, and it was something crazy in Canada. It was like I don't know, twenty bucks a can or something. Yeah, and so the hustlers on our team every time we were in America would just go buy tons of, of logs and then they would resell it to the other team because the other team would be like, dude, I ain't paying 20 bucks. Like, all right, how about 10? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, funny. when you're a broke minor leaguer, like yeah. it's a good hustle. Yeah. I like that. That's right. You know, just That's feed right. people's addictions. Yeah. I didn't do it, but <laughs> you know, yeah. I could see how it worked. Yeah. That's funny. But, uh, okay. So back to the business, man. So yeah. eight and a half mil. Yeah. Um, one thing you told me, in Utah that I found really interesting was you were like, dude, I've been doing a podcast every day for like many years. Mm -hmm. and, and it was like multiple times a day or something crazy. Yep. And you're like, I filmed this many episodes yep. and I just stayed with it, stayed with it, stayed with it. And that's how we built the community. Talk yep. about that. So change lives, make money on the trainer podcast. We've got, uh, it's about 997 episodes to this point. We're almost at a thousand. Um, and that's how I built the business. 
I think at first, you know, I'd go live on Facebook, go live on Instagram. I'd be recording my podcast. I'd have two to three people tuning in. Um, <laughs> there we go. Of course, when you first start. Yeah. But that was, that was the start. Right. And, um, I just wanted to have something that was going to separate me from everybody else. And I knew that if I put in an obnoxious amount of work over an extended period of time that I could do that. And so every single day at 10 a.m. PST, I'd go live with my podcast and I would have something to talk about to give value to my audience. Mm -hmm. And I did that for four years mm. and we ended up growing the podcast right now. The podcast gets between, you know, a hundred to 200,000 downloads a month. Um, and it's been ranked top 50 business podcasts across Canada a couple of times. Um, like I would say it's five, 10, 15 times every, like I go check frequently. So I'm like, okay, we're in the top 50 again. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's been a big thing because for us, like now if a lead isn't interested, we'll just send them to the podcast. Yeah. Like, Hey, you're not qualified. So just start, you know, that's it. Getting to know what we do. And, and, and it warms them up. And I think for, I think long form content is, is a, is a play for a lot of people, especially if you want to be different. Like, I think that a lot of people aren't willing to do podcast. I would say podcasting would be the first place I'd start because YouTube's really hard to get into. Uh, but for me, it was like five days a week, always delivering value. And I think for me in the podcast, it was actionable value. Yeah. Like I were you doing actionable. just an audio podcast or were you videoing it too? What I was doing? videoing it for live stream. I didn't audio it because I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just a 26 <laughs> year old kid starting a podcast. This is what uh, year? Uh, this was 2019 is when I started. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just audio for the most part. And then I would go live. But when I'd go live, that's where I'd sign clients from because I go live and then my clients would see that. And then I would DM them after live stream and be like, what do you think of live stream? And that's like how I built my coaching business at first. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people think it's too late to start a podcast. What do you think? I think it's never too late to do anything. Mm. Like in the last 24 months, we've, I've, I've grown by 109,000 Instagram followers. Mm. People just say that like it's too late because they don't want to start now to put in the work. Yeah. It's going to take an obnoxious amount of work to get anything off the ground. You and I both know that, especially a startup. So it's like, are you like, do you actually have something of value to offer? And is, do you, do you feel compelled to share the message with the world? Because if you do, it's like, you, it's your responsibility. It's never too late to start anything. It's like anybody can make anything successful, period. But it's like most people that start podcasts never continue. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's, I don't think like if you actually have what it takes to have the discipline to do one or two every week and never miss then there's space and there's like room in the space for you. But if you're going to start a podcast and drop off, like don't even start. Yeah, no, I totally agree. You know, whenever I tell people to do anything, not yeah. just content, but let's say workout, let's say get into real estate. Yeah. We always just start with, okay, what are you willing to commit to? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because this isn't, Hey, yeah, I'm gonna um, grow my following something vague. Hey, I'm gonna uh, start real estate and I'm going to get a deal. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that mean? Right. How, Okay. When are you going to get a deal by 90 days? Mm. Okay. How? Okay. Now, you know, your time frame. how, Yeah. right? Oh, you're going to start working out. You want to, you want to be in a show? When's the show? Yeah. What, what, what class are you competing in? Yeah. How, how long do you have to train and get ready for it? Right. Yeah. And so, you know, with content, since we're talking about that, it's like the number one question is like, Oh, how, how often should I post? What platforms, how mm. much, uh, time is it going to take? And I'll be like, well, what do you think you can, you know, commit to yep. every week for the next year Yep. without fail? How many podcasts could you do every week for the next year? Yep. You know, and it's like, ah, oh, maybe one. It's like, all right, then do one. Mm -hmm. You can succeed doing one. Yep. Two's better. Three's yep. better. But if, if one's the number that you can commit to, then just do one. Yep. Um, and then like, oh, well, you know, maybe two. Great. You just doubled your odds. Yep. <laughs> do two. But don't be this wishy-washy guy who, who doesn't even go in with a set plan. Cause if you are not committed to a standard for which you're going to do something, you inevitably just stop or you get crazy result. Like you just, it never hits the mark. Yeah. I think that you should always like find the process that you're willing to commit to and have that be the only thing that you measure your self-worth on. Yeah. Because so many people will start and they're like, I'm going to build the biggest podcast ever. <laughs> and then they'll start, they'll get 20 downloads in the first episode. Like, this is hard. 30 in the first, third one. This is hard. And then I quit. But it's like, for me, if I'm going to build the biggest podcast ever, then I'm going to judge my self worth based on the work that I'm putting in to that thing. Yeah. Like, am I putting in the amount of work that it's going to take over the right amount of time to get there? Yeah. And I never, like, dude, I literally don't even count the reps. Like, I'm not like, how many posts have I made on Instagram? Like, I don't even know. Yeah. Like, how, how much time is it going to take? I don't really care. Like how long is it going to take for me to become the best in the industry? It doesn't matter. Like I'm willing to put in an insane amount of work 
an insane amount of reps until it happens. So like judge your work, like judge your self-worth based on the amount of work that you're willing to put in, not based on the views or the followers or how big your podcast is getting. Or more important, like you said, the time at which it's happening, Mm. right? Because you started in 2019 and to be truthful, you haven't really gotten traction until 2023. That's true. So you had a five-year horizon where you were essentially like, you know what? I'm going to just commit to this, like you said, for the long haul. And yeah, obviously, you you know, you were, you were building and growing and, you know, your business making money, but in terms of like building a brand, yeah, a brand, you're still relatively unknown. Yep. And then finally you caught some traction five years later, Yep. a thousand episodes in literally. That's great. And and, you know, it's funny. I was talked to somebody because before I spoke on stage at Limitless, which was like 7,000, 8,000 people in the audience, Mm -hmm. um, somebody came up to me and they're like, are you nervous? (laughs) I was like, no, not even a little bit. They're like, what? Why? I was like, dude, I've done 900 podcast episodes at this point. It's the same thing. (laughs) Talking to an audience. Right. I'm like literally done this 900 times. Yep. And so when you put in, and I, that's the thing too, is like people say like, I want to make 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, a hundred thousand dollars a month, whatever it is. It's like, no matter what you want to do in life, like you have to become the person that's actually ready to receive that opportunity before you'll get it. Bro, I love that you're saying this because, man, people just do not understand the importance of getting your reps in. Mm. And I mean, you get it as a bodybuilder, right? right? Reps and volume are are just, it's everything. Um, But like, I think about my life and I think about the things I've been successful at. It's like, you know how many baseballs I threw and hit in Mm. my life? Like thousands upon thousands. Mm. You know, when I decided I wanted to do social media, you know how many videos I've made? Thousands upon thousands. Mm -hmm. You know, when I look at the event, you know, people are like, hey, were you nervous? Well, like you. Well, no, actually, I've played thousands of baseball games like in front of fans. Like this ain't nothing new. I've made all these videos in front of trolls and comments like this ain't nothing new. Like, so the event's easy. And then on top of that, we throw this event every quarter. Mm. So I like, I get so many reps Mm. in throwing events and speaking and I just keep getting better and better. And it's not like, you know, yeah, uh, I get coaches and other things to help tune and refine, but nothing will beat reps Mm. and experience. And Mm. so when I go to an event, it's like, I already know mentally how much energy this is going to take, yep. what I need to do, how this is going to structure, what's the optimal way to get, you know, when, when should we get this speaker to go? Yep. You know, okay, we know that, okay, lunch is ending. I got to get somebody with energy right after lunch because we know that people come in sleepy mm. after, like, it's just things you know that mm. no one else would know mm. because you've done it so many times. Mm. I love that. I would rather get reps than try to figure it out from a book. Like I would rather, I seriously, that's the truth. I would rather try something and not know how to do it and then figure it out along the way. But I think you really need to trust yourself in those yeah. instances. Like you really like, cause at the end of the day, I know that you know that no matter what happened at this event, you'd be able to handle it. Oh yeah. No matter what happened. Yep. You know, no matter what. And I think that so many people are, fr- and I think that the reason that people don't do this is cause they're afraid of failure. 100%. That's why they're just like, I need to study as much as I possibly can. So I don't and fail. collect as much data. So I don't fail when the reality is that like, you're going to fail. Well, you actually need you're to fail, fail quicker mm-hmm. so you can just get it done with. Yep. And then that way you get to the success. And then when you see that failure is actually a good thing, because when you fail, you learn. And I think that honestly, like I learned a lot more from my failures than I do my successes. Like success feels good. Don't get me wrong. But when I fail, I'm like, ouch, that hurts. I will never do that again. Yeah. Then you just get better and better over time. So yeah, I think it's just reps. I agree. Reps and reps. And it's the same thing with my social media, dude. Like if you scroll way back on my feed, like you'll see some, you'll see trash, some pretty pretty cringy videos. Let's just say some pretty cringy videos. I tell that to people all the time. I'm like, if you're able to fit, like get all the way to the bottom of my TikTok. That was 2020, you know, so thanks. I've been a TikToker for almost four years now. That it's is freaking, crazy. That's how that's, you blew up, eh? Yeah, it's sad. I, I it's followed sad. you before you had your podcast. I followed you before you had your podcast. Yep, yep, yeah, I did TikTok. And, yeah. um, you know, it was one thing, right? Like yeah. TikTok in 2020, nobody really knew what it was or how to use it. Yeah. Definitely not entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs yeah. were not. It was people dancing. Yeah. So I always tell people, I'm like, if you scroll to the like very bottom of my TikTok, you will see my dance videos. Tell me. Oh yeah. My God. Yeah. Because you danced. You yeah. Because danced. you danced. That, that's what TikTok was. And yeah. I'm like, I guess it's a dance thing. Bro, you need to play that on stage. Bro, I should. You if, need to But play I don't that know that I can stage. get there. Like, is there's, <laughs> there's thousands of videos. Like, if anyone's willing to do it, you'll find it. Yeah, I didn't yeah. delete it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is funny, bro. So, yeah, you'll see some cringe stuff. Of, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. There, there's actually a few videos. I'm not even going to talk. You guys can find some Easter eggs if you guys just really like <laughs> go to the bottom. I'm going to, uh, since you're being vulnerable, I, uh, I used to have a TikTok called Protein CEO. Okay. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> tell me about I went, why are you uh, laughing? Protein CEO <laughs> sounds tight. <laughs> okay. Because um, this is back when I found TikTok as well. And I was doing business coaching and I, was, I had my podcast, but I wanted to have a TikTok that I was just posting funny content. So I made this video where me and my wife were sitting on the couch at my phone. And I just started like obnoxiously just like saying like protein. And she's like, what? I was like, protein. And she's like, pardon me? I was like, protein. And I like started screaming it. And then I was like yelling protein. I went to the fridge, grabbed eggs, smashed it on my face. and started <laughs> eating them. Eating them raw. So you and were like liver king. So I literally went viral for that. And then, dude, it got to the point where I had such a loyal following that when. On the protein CEO? On the protein CEO. It's still, it's still TikTok. still thing. Um, I had such a loyal following that. Um, my, my girl would make a post on social media and my followers would go to her page because she'd be angry at me in my videos and they'd be like, you don't deserve the protein CEO. <laughs> like, he's such a good man. Like, and you're not letting him live up to his potential. <laughs> <laughs> He could be so much more. So you, funny, he could handle 500 grams of protein and you only let him have 250. <laughs> dude, oh, that shit. is funny. How many followers good. did that get? Dude, a hundred, I had like 110, 120,000. <laughs> that was wild. You were just throwing eggs on your face? That was what? it, bro. I just made a following out of it. Yeah. How that many videos good. a week did you commit to for that? I was, dude, I was very committed to that TikTok. I was very, <laughs> why'd I was you, like, why'd you I was stop one, doing it? I was one a day every day. Okay. So the reason I stopped doing it, that's a good question. <laughs> one day every day seven days a week i'm obsessed with everything I do. you don't deserve is, it is, is, uh, <laughs> i i would go out to grocery stores and i would have 14 year old boys look at me and they'd be like protein <laughs> so like so finally i realized i'm like this is not good for my business like <laughs> this like, kid ain't buying this is not good for my business so I, it was building a loyal following and it like it got to a point where it was actually taking a lot of effort to create that content <laughs> and i'm like if i'm gonna put this much effort into creating content i should probably be doing it for my business so and then you went to make it normal videos that got no views. Yeah, normal videos got no views. And then I kept, dude, and that's- Like, how was thing. that? Like, mentally, though, dude, like- It wasn't good. It wasn't good. And yeah. I kept reverting back. I'm like, maybe I I'm should- I'm going back to the drug of I, protein CEO. <laughs> yeah. I need the views, man. I need the fix, bro. I need the fix, bro. <laughs> I need the views. I'm tired of working hard over here and yeah, getting no dude, views. It, it honestly wasn't good. And again, it's like, I feel like I've always had that, like, goofy side of my personality. And it's starting to come out of my videos now. Like, if you watch my content, like, I'll the, throw, The protein like, CEO can still be in your normal content yeah yeah i think we need to yeah. like once a week bring that guy back yeah i think uh we're, we're actually we are reviving him because i i just started a gym in canada aesthetic nation gym and uh we're promoting the cafe i'm like the best way to promote the cafe is to get the protein ceo in the cafe <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> protein ceo needs to get his protein so we're yep. gonna bring him back from the dead um but yeah it was hard bro because again i'd post a protein video that would get millions of views <laughs> And then I, and then I'd go to post my, like, you can change your life video and like you're like super 200 like, views. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going back to the eggs, bro. Like the super valuable video that's going to help you. And yeah, but then no, no, we want to see eggs on your face. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny though, because that is, that is it though. How many people spend so much time on their content and they're like, I know this message is good and I know it means something, but for some reason it's not hitting. Yeah. And that's why people don't post. Right. Is because they're like, I know, like, this is actually true for me and they're sharing it and it doesn't hit. And that doesn't mean that you suck. It just means your content sucks. Yeah. And if you understand you don't suck, your content sucks and you don't attach your self worth to the views, then you can actually do the work and be like, okay, what about this isn't right? Right. Is it the hook? Is it the setting? Do I have a dirty plant behind me? Am I filming with an iPhone? Right. right. Like, what about the video isn't hitting? Then we can start to work on those things. So like, you really need to detach yourself from like, I'm not my content. Like my content is a separate thing that I'm working on, you know? And I think for you too, it, it started working once you got a coach, a guy like Devin, yep. to, to actually look at it objectively yep. and say, hey, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. Yep. This is okay. You know, this is good. These are the things we got to change. Mm. If we change all these things, you know, we're going to start seeing results. I want to add something. Yes, I got a coach. I got a coach and I got coachable. Because a lot of people get coaches and they're like, cool, hired a coach. Thanks, <laughs> Ryan. I'm good. 
I'm viral now, but it's like, you got to be like, get a coach and then be coachable. Right. So for me, it's like, I would show up to those calls and he would like, he's a savage, bro. Like he'd be like, this is absolute trash. Can't believe you wrote this script. Oh my God. What am I reading? And I'm like just sitting there, just taking it. And I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> like it sucks. Well, and you know, just have the humbleness to take it from a 19 year old kid who's, you know, who's not as successful as you yep. not making the money you're making, yep. you know? Like that takes a level of humbleness to be coached by someone like that. Dude, I would literally get off my calls and I'd go to my wife and I'm like, I have never had anybody talk to me like that before in my life. <laughs> and he's a 19 year old kid. Go, <laughs> go meet this kid I outside. I'm like, like, I, like, I, like, I like, like it though. You know, I like it. I like, like, I'm like, touche. Can you, know? can you yell at me more? <laughs> like, can I have another session? Yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day, this is the thing. It's like, I'm very aware when I'm not the biggest fish in the room. I told the muscle this too. I'm like, yes, I made $8.5 million last year. Yes, my business is very successful. But when I meet somebody like the muscle, like I'm going to hold the door for him. And I'm going to ask him like, how are you doing this? Because mm. I'm not at that level. Right. It's like, I could pretend I'm at that level and I could front that I'm at that level. Or I could just like, be honest and be like, I'm inspired by you. I want to get to that level. Like, what can I learn from you? It was the same with Devin. Like I reached out to Devin. I'm like, yo, you're popping on social media. Every single video I saw was like hundred thousand views, 200,000 views, 500,000 views. I always, always seen this kid in my newsfeed. I was like, I don't know what you're doing, but I want to learn. So like, teach me. Yeah. And like, whatever you say, I'll do. Yeah. You know, it's interesting, right? I mean, cause you're in the fitness business. So, um, you, I think as a byproduct, you're like, um, with a lot of, uh, alphas. Yeah. Right. And so <laughs> alphas, let's just call them alphas, right? Alphas. <laughs> Look, not to hate on the fitness business, but <laughs> the most insecure people are in fitness. Mm -hmm. That's actually why they got into fitness. Yep, it's true. Um, so, you know, that's why I say alphas. Yep. And a lot, you know, it's like, dude, if you're around successful business owners, you know, we're talking about men, they're all alphas to some degree. I mean, to, to, in order to get to that level, you've got to be somebody who's like ready to roll, take action, mm -hmm. take risk lead people like that's just they're all byproducts right yep. now they could be secretly insecure and all like you could fake it to a certain degree yeah but what i have realized is you know yes you can still be an alpha and be powerful and you know all these different things but a true alpha like you're saying understands where they're at in the pecking order for the room mm. right mm -hmm. because when you see these other guys who you know it's like they're, they're in this room and they're trying to like prove themselves and like be these, this thing and be the top dog. And it's just like, you could see like people like, dude, what do you know? Yeah. Like stop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. But I, I, yes. And I think that, uh, there was a podcast that Alex Ramosi did with, uh, Andy for they, they talked about that, <clears throat> but it's like, that comes from insecurity. Yeah. It's like, I don't value myself enough to just show up as I am. And so I need to come into this room with these other people that are at a higher level and prove myself to them. Right. Or it's like, I would rather just show up as I am and be like, hi, you know, nice yeah. to meet you guys. Yep. Yeah. Like you're cool. You, like guys are, your content. you guys are killing it. I literally walked up to you. I'm like, I love your content. And I changed my hair color because I saw one of your videos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I'm not going to pretend that yeah. like I'm cooler than I am. I'm like, I'm just going to show up as myself and like, Hey, so yeah. did it work? It actually did not. <laughs> it did not. This is this is when, <laughs> dude, I went through a phase of my content where I was like, I will literally do anything to figure this out. So I dyed my hair color. Okay. <laughs> I I bought my Lamborghini with the with the justification that I was going to do it for my content, which it did not help my con with my content at all whatsoever. If anything, people were like, oh, this guy's a Lamborghini or whatever. Something like that didn't <laughs> help at all. It's cool. Yep. Mansion didn't help. Literally, I tried <laughs> everything. I'm talking everything. I literally tried everything. And it wasn't until like, I stopped trying so hard. Now you got a G-Shock. People, you know, it's funny. People like, like, oh, you're rich and you have a G-Shock? Yeah. No, I but do. I'm saying I like, like I, I was, I was thought you were about to tell me you bought a Richard Milley or something. No, dude. I'm like, <laughs> this is, this is me, bro. I That's why ASMB. you didn't make it. Dude. Shirt on, you, you, didn't have a, you didn't have a, you didn't have a Richard Milley. That was the missing piece. If you had had the mansion, the Lambo. Do you have a Richard Milley? No. <laughs> You know, that's why I'm not at the top, dude. That's like, fine. That's it. You're, that's, you're on the come up though. Yeah, and when you get there, as long as I buy money. that, it's guaranteed. Yeah. hundred percent. Guaranteed success. Yeah. That's when you make it. Yeah. So you just kind of like, you know, you ever seen that meme where the guy's like digging yeah. and he's like about to hit the diamond and he quits. Yeah. 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 You know, that was you. You just needed the Richard. Murray. <laughs> <laughs> you would have, you would have been there. I'm just going to tell my, we're, we're going to get a rich million. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you get jacked? How do I get jacked? Because you're 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 in the fitness competition, yeah. and all all jack guys wear like loose shirts. So you can't even really tell how jacked they are, but you're freaking jacked. I you know people see it. Yeah. Um, same thing with anything. Consistency. 
reps. Like I, even when I'm traveling, like I, as soon as I get to a hotel, the first thing I do is I look for the gym. Yeah. So the gym, the hotel opens at seven in the clock in the morning. I don't like that. I like to work out early. I also think that if you're a business owner and you want to get jacked, you have to do it before you start your day. Yeah, absolutely. Because like, dude, like we're dealing with so many different things. So many different people want my attention. Like I'm running two businesses. So I've got PT Dom and then I've got my gym. I've also got a wife. So if I don't wake up early and get all my fitness first, it's just like not going to be a priority. So I go to the gym 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm back by seven. Um, I have a healthy breakfast. And then throughout the day, like I have all my meals planned. My wife cooks for me. I love you. Otherwise, I'd probably be overweight. <laughs> uh, but so if your wife isn't willing to cook for you, then I would recommend doing some sort of like meal prep, especially yep. as a busy entrepreneur. Like I just meal prep every day. Yeah, You, you do? No, I don't make my meal. Oh, prep. I, buy I was it. like, oh, yeah. my gosh. I'm no, like, no way. No. I'm like, bro, buy back your time. I'm like, what are you doing? Bro, try, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meal prepped when I was playing minor league baseball. Yeah. Like I would just get like this big bowl of rice. I would just grill like, you know, 12 chickens, whatever came in the pack. Yeah. And then, um, you know, crack some eggs, grab the veggies, and I just make this massive fried rice. All in, all in one bowl? Yeah. And then, like, you know, I just had my meal preps of, like, this, my own fried rice. That was, and, you know, when I think about that now, it reminds me of when I was broke. And so yeah. I will never do it again. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I, I like, I like going back to when I was broke. I think yeah. it's good. Like a good I used reminder. To, I used to do a lot of things. Like, you know, I would make my own beef jerky. Yeah. So I would go to the butcher shop. I'd have them cut it up. And then I had this, like, uh, dehumidifier and yeah. I would make my own beef jerk because beef jerky is too expensive. Yeah. Now I buy beef jerky on, on Amazon, you know, it's <laughs> kind of, uh, you know, it's a big yeah, deal. I, uh, I, I was telling my, my girl the other day, I went out to the store and I bought a pack of like, uh, like peaches and cream oatmeal. Yeah. Because when I was broke, what I would do is I would have peaches and cream oatmeal and I would have two packets of it. I mix it with peanut butter. And like, I, I had the peaches and cream oatmeal. I'm like, this reminds me of when I was broke, but it was actually a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I'm like, this is cool because it like brought me back. Yeah. To memories. Like that place. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's good for like once. For once, for once, exactly. Yeah, like it's not. I threw out the. Yo, rest you of the do pack. it for a month. You're yeah. like, wait a minute, <laughs> things are. I'm starting to reprogram pretty, myself. Yeah, things the other are. Way. Are we okay? Yeah. <laughs> I was, dude, you want to hear something funny? Yeah. So, I was telling our students this. I, uh, you know, we're like reworking our nanny's role and stuff, and I was like, you know what, babe, I'm gonna write out an SOP for the nanny because, like, I, I build everyone else's business. I might as well help you out. Yeah. She kind of took it good, but she also kind of took it as well. So you don't think I'm doing a good job. And I'm like, no, no, no. That's like, you're doing a great job. I want to make your life easier. Okay. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, one criticism, this is where, you know, wrong wording, you know, one criticism is like, why do we not have like consistent food in the house? Like we don't even shop at the, the grocery store. Like, you know, uh, why is like, we should have a consistent day, like twice a week where it's like, it comes in this day. Like we order this day every week. Yeah. We order this day every week. So we don't ever like not have something. Cause like by Monday, maybe I'm out of meal preps. Maybe we're out of fruit, like whatever. And I'm just like, how did this even happen? And then, <laughs> you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is what we got to do. Boom, boom, boom. And it dawned on me that for the last six months, Every morning, you know, I'd be eating a Greek yogurt and a banana and I hate bananas, but it just so happened to be the only fruit that was in the bowl all the time. Like yeah. we just order a lot of bananas because the kids like bananas yeah. and what I hate bananas. And I was like, wait a minute, I'm rich. Why am I eating bananas like a monkey? <laughs> like I don't, why am I eating a fruit? I don't even like, I could just buy pineapples. I love pineapples. I love mangoes. Like I'm, I'm Filipino. I love tropical fruits. Why am I eating the stupid banana every day for the last six months? Yeah. And it just dawned on me. I was like, I'm the idiot. I didn't build a process that just on autopilot, there's a pineapple already cut up in my fridge every Monday. <laughs> and I eat a pineapple every day. Cause I love it. Yeah. It's dumb, but like we find ourselves in a circumstance and yeah. we just get used to it. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, I just eat a banana every day. And then I questioned myself because um, uh, we were just talking about it. And like we were out at a restaurant. And I was like, I love pineapples. Like, dude, I never have them and I'm eating pineapples. And I was like, why do I never have pineapples <laughs> if I love them? I can afford them. Yeah. And so I don't know, dude, it's just like this realization you start to have about food where <laughs> you're like, I don't understand why I even do this Yeah, because you just get used to your circumstance. That is a funny story. Yeah. I don't know where that came from, but I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here. I don't know. Cut, cut it out. I don't, I don't no, need my I wife to hear it. it. In. I don't need my wife to hear it. So to keep that in. I, I want to tell you a funny story. Can I, I'm, yep. I'm going to tell you. Okay. So speaking of nannies, um, 
But anyways, my or, my nanny now knows I like pineapples, yeah. and so every Monday and Thursday they get ordered. Yeah, there we go. Yep. So you got your pineapples. I got them you now. Got Are you sleeping bananas? Um, dude. I mean, I ate one the other day. <laughs> I don't know how I did, but you know what? I ate all the pineapples. There, okay. It just wasn't enough. Okay, so I got a story for you. Yeah. Um, so nannies. Um, I come home and uh, I had to pay, I had to go to the barber and. For some reason in Kelowna, we have this barber that's like an old school barber that only takes cash. I go home, I'm like, okay, I gotta get my cash. So I have like, I usually I have, usually have like a stack of cash at home, like in this like little drawer in the back cupboard in my house. So I go open the drawer, cash is gone. And there's like $2,500 in $100 bills. And I was like, what <laughs> is happening? And so I'm like, okay, I'm like, before you freak out, I'm like, you need to look around. So I like look around, can't find anything. Then I call my wife and I'm like, babe, the nanny stole our cash. And she was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I was like, give me their number. I'm like, I'm calling them right now. So like, she gave me her number and I'm like, and, and I was like, I know you guys stole it because I know for a fact it was here and it's not here and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, we're so sorry. We'll figure it out. We'll get to the bottom of it, whatever. I hang up the phone. And then Kirsten calls me back. She's like, oh, I forgot to tell you. I moved your cash. I was like, <laughs> I was like, why did you move it? She's like, well, I just saw it at the back of the drawer and I was like, this is a stupid place to keep your money. So I just took it and I moved it to a different place. I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> <laughs> did, didn't you ask her? What's that? Didn't you ask her? I did ask her and she didn't tell me. Yeah, I didn't ask, I just, but she was, she was in a little bit of a procedure. So she was in a procedure. That's uh, funny, yeah, It was dude. funny. Anyways. So the nanny did not steal the Nan cash. Nanny did not steal the cash and they never came back. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> she was offended. That was an she awkward conversation because I remember like texting him afterwards. I was like, yeah, we'll figure it out later. I'm super sorry. But anyways, <laughs> Here's a bonus. We're good now. <laughs> <laughs> well, bro, yeah. dude, I'm just grateful. Um, like I said, to, to get to know you better, man, and to uh, for, for your support and, yeah. you know, just to bounce ideas and obviously it's just the start of something big and i think you're going to continue to grow and i think we're going to do some awesome things together as kind of like uh the next wave of of you know these guys and stuff so it's I exciting agree, bro. bro it's cool to see that you're a 34 yeah because we're uh, we're on the come up right now that's the goal it's man. only the beginning and i i appreciate the opportunity i'm not going to take it lightly i got uh got tomorrow on stage so i'm going to show for your audience i'm excited i love it yeah where can people find you uh you can find me at the real brian mark on instagram my YouTube channel is something that I'm currently building right now. I'm the most passionate about it. So you guys can find me at Brian Mark on YouTube. Yeah. The Change Lives Make Money Online Trainer Podcast. Okay. Yep. I mean, you forgot the protein CEO, but um, <laughs> we'll go check that I'm out. I'm going to get a bunch of comments on those videos now. Yeah. Right about that. Yep. So go check them out. The protein CEO <laughs> and might be revived. I'm going to go check it out. But um, anyways, guys, make sure you subscribe to this and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. We're in a social media recession. Do you know anyone who's like, I need to follow more people? Everyone is like, it's too much. If you want to set yourself apart, you have to niche down from the start. People don't want to do that. For anybody who's like thinking all of you are equal. 